Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In the Earth sciences, the significance of space weather and the Earth-Sun connection is becoming more and more undeniable. A scientific case is now being made for the role of solar activity and changes in the Earth's geomagnetic environment in earthquakes and other natural disasters. If solar activity and other factors do contribute to earthquakes, then one of the most important questions scientists can ask is, can the likelihood of earthquakes be predicted? Today, the founder of Space Weather News and the Mobile Observatory Project, Ben Davidson, along with scientific colleagues, has developed an app that attempts to do just that. We asked Ben to offer an introduction and overview of the app's genesis and development and the scientific foundation behind it. In essence, we began conceptualizing the app at the beginning of 2016. We did a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds for the app in the spring of 2016. Uh, $120,000 was raised in about two weeks, and um, unfortunately that is what it takes to, to really build an app and get all the servers going and have back-end programs that you create. and front end uh, app programming uh, you know that the user actually experiences when when they're using the app uh, and things like that and it just came out uh, December 20th uh, of 2016 right at the end of the year there at this point we are just trying to spread the word about it and uh, I, I don't want to say we've become content in any way but uh, we are extraordinarily encouraged by what has happened in just the first few weeks of the app being live. Uh, of course, in the 30 days uh, of the beta period, we had with about 200 users before that as well. And since the earthquake forecasting model portion of the app has been in play since uh, the end of this uh, past summer in 2016, uh, it has been very encouraging as well. So it's sort of been a process that we didn't really see coming, so to speak. Uh, we would have thought something like this would have taken a few years, but in essence, the app uh, really sort of came together in 2016. Uh, we got some good back-end programming, some good front-end programming, and uh, now we have uh, something that right in the palm of your hand can talk to you about earthquakes and space weather. You know, there's a lot of skepticism when it comes to discussing uh, space weather and uh, other electromagnetic uh, signals and precursors of large earthquakes to come. And that's understandable because uh, the efforts to do just that thus far have been you know, somewhat failing. Most of the most used space weather indices like sunspots, solar flaring, solar wind speed, geomagnetism, like how big of a storm we get, how high the KP index goes, things like that, those do not seem to be directly correlated with uh, seismic events, although quite a number of interesting coincidences do occur. Uh, it, it is difficult to, to get past that. However, most of that information is becoming quite outdated and becoming outdated quite quickly. Uh, that comes from 2013, 2014, and in 2015, uh, we wrote uh, the paper, uh, the initial paper on how the solar polar magnetic fields are triggering magnitude 8 in larger earthquakes. We did that with Dr. Kong Papu Yen and with uh, Dr. Christopher Holloman from The Ohio State University. And followed that up with a, with a second paper in 2015 as well, also on the topic of how a, a lesser well-known space weather factor, coronal holes, uh, and more importantly, their distinct electromagnetic output and their interplanetary magnetic fields that reach out and touch the planets, how that actually is the thing that we should be looking for with earthquakes, which was never really studied uh, in this way before. And what's interesting is most of the headlines uh, from third party reporters on some of the studies that were done by the USGS uh, and, and others back in 2013, 2014, maybe before that, that showed that there was no way uh, to prove that the sun had anything to do with earthquakes or to predict earthquakes in any way. That's, that's the kind of thing where back then, 
Uh, the paper didn't even discuss coronal holes, and the paper didn't make a blanket statement about the sun or about predicting earthquakes. It just said, hey, when we look at sunspots, solar flares, et cetera, when we look at these specific things, we don't see anything. And thus far, the predictive models don't seem to work thus far. And so while you know, you'll see reporting on this that has really skewed public perception, the reality of what exists right now is setting the stage of what, what we know doesn't work, uh, what the standard is for figuring out what does work, and moving forward from there. Now, the first thing we did was attempt to prove that the sun uh, triggers earthquakes. We had the two peer-reviewed papers in 2015 on that, New Concepts in Global Tectonics. But Im almost immediately after that, uh, we began working on uh, compiling pre-seismic factors that had been reported in studies uh, throughout the last few years and the last few decades. Everything from patterns scientists thought they saw in foreshock activity um, and you know, published in the 70s. Well, we got a lot of time to check and see if they were right since then. There have been uh, papers published about outgoing long wave radiation anomalies or total electron content anomalies, problems or fluctuations with the L shell magnetic fields, GPS disruptions, um, EMF signals that sort of crop up out of nowhere, positive ion emission, earthquake lights, animals uh, acting funny before an earthquake. The list does go on and on. Uh, these things are all published, and they've been published about for years, some of them decades. We have a lot of time to see how they work. Turns out there are very few that work better than others. A specific kind of foreshock analysis, a atmospheric pressure analysis, and outgoing long-wave radiation in terms of looking at uh, where we are to be seeing larger earthquakes soon, imminently, as in uh, in the coming hours to just a few days. Uh, in terms of timing it, which, you know, when you put those areas on alert or when we think the earth in general is more ready to have these bigger earthquakes, well then that's when we look back to the original papers we did back in 2015 where we absolutely agree with everything the USGS actually said. We know that there are third-party reporters that said, oh, the sun can't trigger earthquakes, says the USGS. Well, that's not what they said. What they said is specifically solar wind speed, geomagnetism, sunspots can't. They did not close the door and overreach uh, with their findings. They, um, that is something that was done by other people. But using those those things called coronal holes and their effects on the earth, you are able to get a pretty good idea of the timing, the ebb and flow of earth's upticks and downturns in large earthquakes. You know, what's really excellent about this is um, it doesn't require any trust and it doesn't require any advanced knowledge. Uh, the good thing about are posting our alerts on this app and are posting our alerts on Twitter as well, is anyone with access to the internet can go and see what alert was posted when. Uh, it's clear as day with big red lines and big red stars and yellow lines. You know, It's on basically a, a global satellite map to show you which areas of the world are on alert. And of course, we, we chose Twitter as opposed to one of our own websites because that is a third party timestamp that you know, we can't hack Twitter. We can't go and manipulate the, the times of these things. It's essentially a permanent public record of what happened when. And so we are constantly doing this forecasting. It's not actual predictions of events to come. It's using all of those factors, the atmospheric pressure, the outgoing long wave radiation, timing it based on the sun, taking a look at what's happening beneath our feet as well for, for some of the more robust foreshock patterns. And we take the entire world's active fault lines and reduce them to about 10 to 20%. Now, you say 10 to 20%, that's still a fairly large chunk of earth. Well, at this point, I wouldn't have to say that these alerts are more informational, educational, rather than actionable. Not the kind of thing where we could put a city on alert like is put on alert for a hurricane and tell a government to commit resources and evacuate people, at least not yet. 
uh, it's more informational. But that it, we have to take an intermediate step to go from no earthquake forecasting to being able to give hurricane-like warnings. Uh, the you know what is tantamount to the practical equivalent of prophecy would probably be very unreasonable. This we claim is the first good intermediate step, and in that ten to twenty percent of Earth's active faults that are identified at any given time. We're capturing about 70% of the magnitude six and larger earthquakes, and we've had streaks of four in a row, five in a row. We had a streak of 10 in a row, the kind of thing where if this was just random luck uh, and you just sort of randomly placed uh, your alerts around the world, uh, it would be about a one in 10 million chance of getting 10 in a row. And so, uh, specifically, some of the uh, some of the big hits that that have really taken place, uh, and there's a list of this that can be seen on QuakeWatch.net. The largest earthquake to happen during the run of the model was a 7.9 that struck Papua New Guinea uh, on December 17th, and it was in the alert zone. There was a pretty well known magnitude 7.8. That struck New Zealand back in November actually caused a bit of a tsunami. It matched they it pretty much matched the largest earthquake they had ever had there. That one was in an alert zone as well. The only six pointer to strike California during the last uh, few months, indeed, you know, the last year and a half or so, was back on December eighth, twenty sixteen, during one of the only red alerts California has had. We got the six point six in Italy October thirtieth as well. We also got the uh, 6.9 that struck El Salvador uh, very close to Thanksgiving. There have been about 25 total uh, large significant earthquakes. 18 of them have been in areas that have been on alert according to these alert maps. Now, that's the kind of thing where by random chance at putting 10 to 20 percent of the world on alert, out of those 25, we actually should have just randomly got about two to three to four uh, of, of those earthquakes. But we shouldn't have gotten eight. We shouldn't have gotten 14. We certainly shouldn't have gotten 18. I was very happy that the Thunderbolts recently posted my talk from their last conference because it was largely about some of the most promising pathways forward. And this really uh, was one of them. I know you guys will be kind enough to go ahead and put a link to that talk right in the description box. So if you're listening to this Space News program, uh, a link to that talk should be right down below there. This is one of the things I was talking about. And so far, it is uh, quite fruitful. Um, I have to imagine that it would have been virtually impossible to come up with the forecasting model uh, or even see how the sun was affecting earthquakes to begin with within the box of the mainstream only. Um, it's only by blending you know, the volume of work that the mainstream has given with some of the necessary adjustments that need to be made with some electric universe principles. That is really what is required in order to see, understand, and really come up with a way to make this information useful. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.